I check. Hello and good evening to Adikmi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video, we will discuss the current affairs and gazette for 8th of February 2022. Before we begin the discussion, let me welcome each of you here. Hi, Amlin, Hima, good evening. Good evening, Netra, Ashish, good evening to you. Hello, Pooja, Bhavani, Anonymous, good evening. And uh, we have Mithun Somek, good evening to both of you. Hi, Ravi and everybody else thank you for joining in and uh, i can see that improvement and you can notice that change in yourself it's great to see that uh, you people are commending each other and learning from each other on the answer writing skills some of you are providing a very good competitive environment as not only the points but alongside you're also pushing in some data or examples so this makes your points more credible it highlights it makes it like a star Right, so it highlights the point and gives more credibility to your answers. That's what you got to do in every of the answers. Few data, not data need not be everywhere. You cannot even memorize all the content, but let's try for perfection and settle for excellence, isn't it? So it's great to see this uh, level of effort from you all. And mind you, uh, there, there are quite a few of you who are, who are viewing this offline. Some of you are participating through offline conversations with me, but then uh, this is where the segregation starts, right? So if you put efforts only on knowing the content, this is one level of understanding. But if you organize it and present it back, if you memorize it and present it back, this is going to be more fruitful for you because eventually that is what has to be done, right? Slowly and steadily, I'll start introducing you to uh, the levels of answer writing as well. Right now, we are in the process of gaining data and representing it in a form. But answer writing is a little, little higher than this. And thank you for uh, being a part, right? Because uh, this is how it actually uh, flows, right? So thank you for uh, bearing with me and participating because through this initiative only, uh, we are going to get better and better with time, right? So great practice, great participation in the last few months. And I think it is only uh, going to increase with time, right? Your, your rigor, your participation, the intensity, and then one odd day you will just get through. That's how it will happen, right? And but till the time you got to be here, you got to be present and you got to be doing this, right? So what do we have in the current affairs segment today? We have our daily guide to UPC current affairs. We have a car T cell therapy, a T cell therapy, which has been in news lately, important for biotechnology developments. The second one is accreditation policy for press. Now the press reporters who are reporting in online media, they will be also made PIB worthy. We will understand what these terms are, how the government is trying to regulate press and individual news reporters. The third one is on open cast mining, the impact and effect of this. It was in news lately because of some mishap in Jharkhand. It keeps happening all the time. This day in history dedicated to first railway workshop in India in Munger, Jamalpur. Why? And uh, we'll understand that as well. Feature news for today is on high frequency indicators, high frequency data. Uh, for policy making, what, what is the high frequency data that we are talking of? What is the variability or variety of data that is going to support this? We have understood the barbell strategy, the agile approach. Through this, we are uh, relying on the HFI, high frequency indicators. We will understand the, the kind of data used here, the impact of this data usage, the side effects of it, the, the implications of it, and what is the way forward. A beautiful featured news and a very decent amount of uh, valuable information has been passed on by you people as well. So great effort there. Emails of the day on incense village from Vietnam. Terms and concepts, four terms that we have, Bheem Sen, Joshui, M, Rapper, the Ramsar sites and uh, breakthrough of the year award nominations. Three editorials that we have, the first one is on big technology versus government of India. Right, companies like Twitter, WhatsApp, etc., Facebook. And the third, second one is peri-urban transformation, peri-urban areas. So this is on that. And the third one is on the great power rivalry that is happening in Europe and India's participation there. Case study is on the lady who has suffered through leprosy, but trying to heal people through leprosy itself. Before we begin, good evening, Vakram. Good evening to you. Before we begin this conversation, there was a question from yesterday, and I'd like to fulfill the answer here. Uh, the question was, what is the purpose of methyl alcohol and acetic acid? What is the use of that? 
So both of them were in use because of uh, uh, the reduction in the import taxation, the custom duty, methyl alcohol 2.5%, now an acetic acid 2, 5% from the 10%, right? So why has government reduced the uh, tariffs here is because of the kind of utility methyl alcohol and acetic acid have in industrial processes, right? So uh, on one hand, methyl alcohol, CS3COOH, the common, uh, the most common alcohol, methyl alcohol, smells very much similar to the ethyl alcohol, right? Ethyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol is the one which is going to get blended with fuel. But so is methyl alcohol. Methyl alcohol will also be used uh, with fuel blending in future. So this has got uh, uh, good properties like it is biodegradable. It is less toxic as compared to other substances in industrial processes. I'm speaking of methyl alcohol. And this has also been rated as second generation biofuel. We'll understand this quickly in the biofuel policy that I'll explain very, very quickly after this. It can be used as a coolant in vehicles, anti-freezing of the pipes. If the pipes get gets frozen, this can be used for anti-freezing of the pipes, right? And earlier methyl alcohol was also used uh, to demotivate consumption of alcohol. So this is literally a poison for human beings and if it is since it also smells like ethyl alcohol and other alcohol alcoholic product it can be mixed with the traditional alcohol and um, if people consume it it is it is not a good thing and then it might even lead to death and that is why this kind of practice has now been considered illegal right methylated spirit creation has been called as illegal hooch if you have heard of hooch strategies 40 people die 100 people die now, this is also called as denatured alcohol. So this practice has been banned, but it was also used for this activity as well, right? So uh, this is the primary use of methyl alcohol. And then we have acetic acid. The percentage reduction in acetic acid is less, more in methyl alcohol. It is simply because methyl alcohol is used to create acetic acid again. It can be used to create acetic acid, right? So if you reduce more duty on methyl alcohol, it's good only because we are importing the raw material and creating the other product here. So what is the use of acetic acid? It can be used to create synthetic fibers, fabrics, glue, photographic film, so various chemical processes, right? It acts as a reagent, reagent, something that can be used to accelerate the reaction or it can be used to continue the reaction process. It might get consumed, might not get consumed in the process, all right? So acetic acid is its use. On the other hand, uh, another uh, entity, sodium cyanide, its price was raised, right? Its, uh, its uh, custom duty was raised. It is because India is manufacturing this already in sufficient numbers. What is its utility? Its utility is in that of gold, uh, gold purification, right? So gold purification, chemical industries, this is where it is used. It can cyanide, right? The chemical, it can also be used to kill people. So in case you want to, Sodium cyanide is the one, potassium cyanide is another one. So a few quick reference to the biofuel policy 2018, national biofuel policy. It states uh, quite a few things. A quick reference, I had explained this in the month of June, July. Many of you were not a participant, but then I would like to repeat it for your reference, quick reference, because this is what will get quote. This is something that will get quoted in many of the answers in future. Our biofuel policy envisages four generation of biofuels. The first generation of biofuel are the edible oils themselves, edible oils. Whatever we consume for ourselves, we can use that to create biofuel. This is more uh, nature based, so causing less production of greenhouse global warming gases, right? This is more uh, uh, ecologically sensitive, right? So this is better for environment as well. Uh, as compared to the petroleum products, they are also getting exhausted. This will not get exhausted. This will become a recursive process. First generation biofuels based on food. But is it not that we are using food for uh, edible purposes? If we use it for biofuel generation, there will be shortage of food. That is why second generation biofuel came into being. And these could be non-edible biomass. What about hay? What about sugar can, uh, sugar cane bag as products, right? What, what about molasses? All those could be utilized here. Something that we are not eating, something that is stale already. This is second generation biofuel, wood, starch, grass, all of them become a part of it. In first generation biofuel, we have sugar, sugar cane, beetroot, wheat, corn, all of them. In third generation biofuel, the uh, entity that we are using is algal blooms. We have gone on to the organisms, microorganisms. And in the fourth level of bio, biofuels, we are using uh, the processes to create bioengineered uh, uh, organisms, right? Bioengineered organisms. These are the fourth generation. So uh, 
when you look at the biofuel policy, a question can straight away be asked, or you can you know thrust this kind of data when we talk of renewable energy or more sustainable energy, right? So uh, in 175 gigawatt of the renewable energy, 100 has been awarded to solar, 60 has been awarded to wind, and then we have 160, 175. We have uh, 10 more awarded to to what? This is the biofuel, right? 10 and 5 has been awarded to the small hydro, right? So this 10 of it that we are speaking of is from things like this. So uh, I have picked it up from the government, uh, uh, you know, reports itself, this part, that biofuel production has certain advantages. Firstly, what are we going to do? We are going to have a biofuel policy which categorizes biofuels on the basis of one first generation, second generation, third generation and the fourth generation as well. Right, so first generation basic advanced biofuels and then third generation biofuels which are the algae. Right, the second one is scope of raw material has been ex expanded. Scope of raw material for biofuels has been expanded just from sugarcane to products like corn, uh, uh, sweet potato and uh, wheat etc. Right, and a mapping of the biofuel uh, around the whole country will also be done in this exercise. Right allow the surplus food grain to be used for production. So this is what is the main agenda here, setting up of supply chain mechanisms of non-edible uh, oil seeds as well. This is what is the biofuel policy in, in, in short and the kind of benefit it leads to. Additional income to farmers, absolutely true. Sugarcane farmers will not only be creating, participating in sugarcane uh, industry supply chain, but also into selling the biofuels, right? So it will lead to better income for sugarcane farmers. Reduce import dependence. Why is this so? Government has planned to reduce the import of petroleum products by 10% by the year 2025-26. And that is why biofuel is something that we are looking at. Many of them are not dependent. No, we, we are not uh, dependent. We can't be dependent. No, the renewable energy because it is irreliable. The PLF, the plant load factor of uh, the uh, alternative renewable energy is not very strong. But biofuel gets generated every year. No because of agriculture. So reducing import dependence, this is going to help. Cleaner environment, health benefits through utilization of cooking oil at feedstocks. Waste to wealth, whatever we considered as waste is not waste. It can be created into wealth as well. We need a process. So this is what we speak of uh, when we speak of reduce, reuse and recycle, right? A complete supply chain. So this is what is required. It can generate employment as well. Biofuel can also participate in production of the bio pellets in the thermal power uh, stations and this is the diversification of this image talks about diversification of the biofuel product right so sugar cane molasses corn rotten potatoes wheat broken rice unfit for uh, eating food grains all of them can be utilized this is the diversification of fuels right okay getting back getting back to where we were this was about biofuel policy and the question that you raised so imagine a simple question that you ask and it can lead to so much of uh, credible information for yourself. So never uh, reframe from asking a question. Yes, it is possible that we might give less weightage to a question at times. It, it's possible that we might give more weightage at times. So that totally depends. But uh, what is more important is to ask. All right. Uh, so uh, Kanupriya, good evening. Welcome. Hooch. Yes, Somit. Hooch is the word. Thank you for the right pronunciation here. Uh, Ravi says two rupees two per liter on unblended oil. Yes, that is the kind of uh, uh, government taxation that the government has mentioned. Right now we are blending. Right now ethanol, methanol won't be blended. We'll, we'll start with ethanol blending. And right now the government has mentioned in the budget in that uh, two liter per per uh, liter of two rupees per liter of oil, uh, extra prices everybody has to pay in case the oil blending is not happening. We have target to achieve ethanol blending of 20% by the year 2025. All right. All right. So what is the question here? Thank you for asking these questions and pushing. There is quite a bit to do Hima. So good work here. Very good. Nitish says, Pooja, I am unable to log in because of OTP. Pooja, I am not sure if it has been uploaded because this comes to me separately. But if it's there with me, it will get uploaded as well. Nothing to worry. Anas or oh, somebody else here. Urging, using additional and stale food grains in FCI go downs. Using, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, these are the innovative solutions that you could provide. 30% of the food grains that we uh, that are provided to us, it goes to waste. Almost 30, uh, no, this is not 30%. Thir it is around 17 to 20% of the food grains given to us, it goes to waste at homes also. Right? I'm not talking of the, uh, uh, the leftover of the vegetables. I'm talking of the actual food grains. On the other hand, 30% of greenhouse gases production happens through agricultural sector. All right. So, these are the data around it. They can also be utilized for uh, a complete uh, you know, cycle of biofuels. Absolutely, it can be. Nitish, acetic acid is used for fruit, uh, longer shelf life. Uh, see, acetic acid, formaldehyde and uh, methanol, all of them are used to preserve the biological entities for long in increasing the shelf life of fishes, increasing the shelf life of some products. Right? I am not an expert, but I remember this part as, at least. So, thank you for raising my confidence by <laughs> asking a question like this. Thank you. Thank you, Nitish. See, Nitish himself says, last year 22 million tons went to seas. Just because, and they, and they can be actually used for uh, our, our uh, biofuel policy. So, this is required. What do we need here is an integrated process for every supply. Every supply needs to be part of a supply chain. Right? So, if you can remember a word, a key word for this, a supply chain which is circular, the word is creating a circular economy. I need this word, this kind of word for, from you people. Have we discussed circular economy? Yes. Circular economy we have discussed as a complete featured news itself, I think month of July. Very, very important part of uh, our economic social life, making everything circular. Nothing is a waste to us. All right. Now, the first snapshot is on car. T cell therapy, T cell therapy, this has been used in USA and in fact it was used in you know 10 years back and it has produced great results right now. It has led to people getting cured from diseases like leuke leukemia, a blood cancer disease, right. So what is the process? Let us understand this process. Now uh, before anything blood, the blood has got four components in it, four components in the blood, the amount of the blood that the body contains. How many liters does the body contain specifically of blood and what is the proportion of fluid in the body 60 to 70 percent of fluid right and amongst that blood has got a decent proportion how many liters anybody so in the blood there are four components the four components are right written over here for all of you plasma red blood cells white blood cells and platelets each of them have their own specific functions red blood cell carry Hem they have hemoglobin and that is what you is used to carry oxygen throughout right carbon monoxide and oxygen don't go well with each other they don't go well with each other so carbon monoxide has, has a greater affinity and because of carbon monoxide one can also feel uh, you know uh, shortage of the oxygen being carried so red blood cells is one component white blood cells are the ones which are helped which are used to attack the uh, the external particles which are attacking the body itself so white blood cell is of five kinds one of them is leukocytes do remember that right so the 40 to 45 percent of blood is red blood cells only one percent of it of the blood is white blood cell around uh, 50 percent plus is plasma what does it do it transports nutrients from one place to another right and uh, platelets blood platelets uh, they are the ones which stop bleeding so vitamin k if you remember this these are the four components of blood now in white blood cells one of the components of white blood cells is leukocytes they are primarily two kind of these leukocytes and one of them the t cells are the ones which have been used this time to cure the disease so what is the issue here let's look at it now uh, the lymphocytes the lymphocytes these are the ones which i was speaking of and uh, there are two kinds one is t cells and the other one is b cells so uh, these specific lymphocytes some of them migrate to uh, the bone marrow of the human beings and some of them migrate to thymus thymus is available just around the neck and this is the place from which the t cells are derived what is done is that the t cells from the body from the uh, blood itself it is extracted and then it is genetically engineered. What is the engineering done? Some elements from outside are added to it. And those elements help uh, in, in enriching the blood. 
after blood enrichment blood is again injected back in the body in a proper proportion so it is artificially attached to that particular t cell right the the thymus cell the the external parts and that is called as tar thimeric antigen receptor this is what it becomes tar tell uh, uh, t therapy right this is what it becomes and in due time this is used to cure the cancer in the blood they start attacking those kind of cells which are carcinogenic cancer is nothing but overgrowing uh, particular kind of cells and this is what the car receptor slowly and steadily cures these kind of deadly cancer diseases this is the this is what we have explained here and uh, though this is not the most successful strategy there is only in experimental mode it took 10 years for the person to heal after this kind of therapy and this is not a short sure short way to you know uh, deal with a disease like cancer in fact right now we do not have any procedure like that we have uh, chemotherapy as well to which uh, the uh, the affected cells are uh, uh, you know they are focused upon and then they are uh, burnt right chemotherapy but uh, none of them are the most successful strategies this is one of them that was in news tar t cells all right the side effects of it yes quite a bit they can release when once we have used genetically engineered cells in the body it can release you know uh, chemicals which are which were not required in the body so it can lead to uh, release of cytokine something in uh, larger proportion some ke some chemicals and uh, it can ramp up the immune system and if we have a very very proactive immune system it also leads to inflammation in the body in increased reactivity to the body a common cold like catch an increased reaction in the body inflammation of body parts and then sneezing everything you know uh, fever all of it so this is also not very good it can lead to problems in the nervous system side effects lot of it right so this is the first uh, snapshot c a r t cell therapy all right second update is on accreditation policy for press accreditation policy right so this is the certification that the government is trying to do for the press see government is trying to regulate the press at multiple levels one level is that of the institution itself regulation of the press right press is of multiple kind so we have the online press right digital media companies then we have uh, uh, the newspaper press and then we have tv as well right so uh, news news reporting so uh, the physical news reporting through physical media then we have television and then we have online media government tries to regulate each of them for example for news we have pti for television content and online content government regulate through indirect means what need be need to be there and need not be there in the online content is how government is regulating and this is quite arbitrary right now right now they have been suggestions you know put in for uh, regulating them in a more organized manner government came up with uh, norms as i mentioned just yesterday three level hierarchy for online media regulation so this is how government is regulating the news agencies however government also wants to look at the journalist journalist and give them accreditations individual journalist journalist should be given accreditation or that accreditation or credibility should be snatched away in case there are reporting something which is not appropriate right so this is what this news is on right now right so uh, when people want to report anything that has happened they must report without with ensuring that the integrity and the peace in the nation it retains there should be balance when we look at uh, article 19 right to freedom it should be balanced with uh, reasonable restrictions this is what government is focusing on right now right morality right integrity of the nation contempt of court so if press reporters are reporting on content which is uh, which is which is going beyond the reasonable restrictions government will snatch some of the accreditations so what are those accreditations we are talking of what is the eligibility for that this is what we will get into immediately all right so ministry of information and broadcasting has released a new accreditation policy laying down stringent conditions to let journalists function in the country all right so one of the accreditation is called as pib accreditation press information bureau if you look at pib it is the largest largest information provider for the government whatever the government is doing all the ministries prime minister's office president's office secretariat even uh, diplomats all of them are uh, 
uh, released through PIB data. If the data has not been released in PIB, it is in public sphere. That means it is not credible data. All the credible government data is through PIB. Now, this is the first source of information for everybody, right? And if this information is, uh, uh, you know, is available to privy people, people with privilege, that is quite a deal. So some uh, journalists will be given access to PIB meetings as well. Wherever the government is releasing data, for example, the secretary level officer or minister is releasing data, these journalists will be called there. Called there if they have PIB accreditation, right? So uh, this kind of status will be given to people who have a reasonable. Uh, you know, uh, field experience and uh, uh, and certain level of uh, responsible reporting, right? So, uh, in case they don't have such, loss of PIB status will be uh, there for them. Not only that, this will be for those online, only for online companies, online media companies, where there are uh, users per month. So, per month, if you have a specific number of users, 10 lakh to 50 lakh unique users, unique users, there one person will be one journalist could be given this kind of status so that they can participate in government meetings PIB meetings in case uh, the unique visitors are over one crore then four of such journalists from that organization will be given this rating in case they are irresponsibly reporting then this will be further snatched from them all right and they could also uh, you know be become a part of serious cognizable or uh, cognizable offenses right so this is the update from here Presently, uh, PIB accredited journalists around uh, 2500. This is what we have. There are many other journalists who are working freelancing. No? So freelancing means they are not formally a part of a particular organization. They can also be given this kind of uh, accreditation. So over 15 years of work experience or having 30 years of work experience. So they can also be given this kind of designation. This is what is in news right now. Right. What are the advantages? These people can enter government offices, government meetings. They don't have to report. They don't need an invitation. They can become a part of all this. Right. It has not required to be uh, declared to the government every time they enter the office. So this is an update from here. Right. So maintaining a middle path is more important in case of reporting because media is the fourth pillar. At times it is being said that media as a pillar is becoming irresponsible. At times it is being said that misinformation is being spread. At times it is being said that government is also uh, pressing down on media. Right. So there are various aspects of it. What is required is however uh, maintaining balance amongst all this Right. media. So it uh, becomes an important question or an important example when you look at uh, media regulations. Open cast mining. This is the third one in focus. Uh, this was the news of last week. We have presented right now. There have been a number of articles pending from our end, mainly because of the budget and economic survey. All right. So what is the question here? Nitish Mithun says uploaded. Yeah, it's there, Pooja. Comic majority is plasma. All right. Absolutely correct. So five to five liters. This is what you said. All right. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, Somik rightly mentioned the word cytokinin tone, right? Increased presence of cytokinin because of these kind of therapy measures. This uh, this represents this image represents the kind of mining done uh, around the world. So one of them is open cast mining, and this is underground mining. These are the popular mining techniques used around the world. The difference the difference primarily lies in the image itself. In open cast mine, the mining is done right from the top and then we go get, you know, get down below. But in case of minerals getting found at deeper levels, we might dig a pit or a hole and we might get into the particular area at a deeper level, 100 meters down, 200 meters down. And after that, we dig a tunnel and after that, we try to extract. And there, there are railway lines, there are, you know, there's a complete setup underground. The effects of underground mining or the side effects are different from the ones in uh, open cast mining for example the example of open cast mining issues are simple for example when issues here when there is rain the mine gets filled there is a possibility of collapse of the whole mine here right it might get collapsed under the pressure on the other hand in underground mining the issues could be like uh, uh, leakage of gases right deadly gases here this whole structure as well could collapse over and above 
in case the mining has already happened has already happened and there's a cavity in that area this might lead to the collapse of the whole cavity and uh, you know later lead to issues in the complete landscape the regional landscape there this is happening to places like dhanbad in jharkhand because of uh, incompletion incompletion of the mining activity and stalled mining the whole mine is burning and because of this no agriculture is is, is uh, being pursued in places like that even when the soil is rich because of overheating of the soil so effects of both of them are different now there are two there are a couple more techniques of mining one of them is in situ mining right so here uh, mining is done at the same place these are the techniques that are used for mining of uranium processing of the whole uranium inside the earth itself this is one of the techniques another is the placer mining gold mining so those techniques are also little different from these techniques these are the common techniques of mining open cast and uh, underground mining the latest issue is that that during an open cast mining or you know illegal mining that was happening in jharkhand people died because of the collapse of the whole open cast mine this time open cast mine itself meghalaya is another popular place you know popular for rat hole mining rat hole mining a small rat hole rat hole is a small hole and people you know get inside to be able to extract valuable minerals like copper and other so on and so forth this is what we are talking of here but this is coal mining so what happened here was it the whole mining system collapsed a complete report was generated there are many issues because of which mining happens and mining you know issues happen one of the issue here discussed is that of illegal mining right we have spoken about illegal mining here the causes of it uh, the police force central reserve police force is the one which needs to protect mines but they are not able to protect that people also deserve some livelihood and they try to steal that livelihood through uh, you know quarrying or quarrying or what is quarrying? Quarrying is surface mining. So, you know, picking up the ref left hole particles from the mines itself, right? So, this is what we have uh, explained here. In the report, it was generated that it was a security lapse from CISF and Central Industrial Secu Security Force. This was a part of Coal India Limited. Eastern Coalfield CIL has got, CIL, POCU body has got various organs. Eastern Coalfields Limited is one of them. And uh, this is where this uh, lapse occurred, right? Now, reasons for open cast mining in states, poverty, security lapses, no proper demarcation of authority and nexus, right? So, uh, when you look at a nexus, there is a complete uh, uh, nexus and there is a uh, inorganized, uh, you know, untaxed, completely, uh, you know, away from the government's uh, sector of uh, mining, right? A nexus driven mining here. And proper demarcation is also not there what is the level up to which the government will be protecting these mines all right so this was an update jharia yes worst air quality index in the world rat hole mining majority of children are there good good somik good that you are able to provide these kind of data appreciate it first railway workshop of india was at a place called as Jamalpur, this is near Munger in, in Bihar and uh, this is the place where uh, first time the steel rolling mill was established, steel rolling mill, the rolling industry, the whole steel, malleable and ductile steel, it, it is spread out and see these are the steel rolls, these, these could be aluminium or asbestos, whatever it be, but these are rolls, a complete roll and this is where it was first time established, railway needed important uh, ways to be able to refurbish itself and therefore workshop of india see workshop of india this is what britishers did helped us to establish our own industries today itself that was in the year 1852 160 years back 170 years feature news for the day is on high frequency data for policy making right we will understand through images and figures what has been the cause of concern in high policy indicators what have been the uh, best points about high frequency indicators what have been the concerns raised Appreciate your inputs. Today has been a very good day for you guys because the answers that you have given are really good. So, uh, image of the day is on uh, the incense village in Vietnam. This is a traditional practice to create incense and distribute it uh, all around the world during the time of their New Year celebration, Lunar Year celebration. These celebrations are also important for China because they also celebrate the uh, Lunar Year as their New Year. Right. So, this is what is in uh, image. 
Noteworthy is the incense industry. This is a MSME industry, informal based industry, also established in a country like India. Right. So when we look at employment, employment driven sectors, you should start noting at 10 of these sectors and memorize them all together. So one of them is incense based industry uh, and there are many others similar, similar to it, right? Forest based industries. So uh, when you look at how we could present solutions to problems, in, uh, you know, start looking at employment based industries in a country like India, because we have high employment and we have to produce quality product. Machines cannot all the time produce quality products. Human labor on the other hand can also do that. Terms and concepts in news, Pandit Bhimshin Joshi, why was he in news? 100 years of his birthday, centenary celebrations of his birthday. Passed away right now, he is no more, but uh, he was one of the stalwarts in music industry and uh, popular for Hindustani uh, classical music. Karnatic and Hindustani had two forms of the classical music in India, Hindustani music uh, he was popular for. He also received Bharat Ratna, he was one of those 48 people who have received Bharat, Bharat Ratna along with Lata Mangeshkar. Right? So why is Bharat Ratan so much in news these days? It's always been in news, right? So as I explained earlier, Bharat Ratna, when it is awarded, a people-shaped leaf is given to the person with the Bharat Ratna written on one side and along with emblem, right? So uh, this is the Bharat Ratna award along with a certificate of appreciation to the person. No monetary benefit is given. Nothing was given to Pandit, Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi also in the same regard, right? So, Khayal singer, one type of singing in, uh, in what gharana? Kirana gharana, yes. He was from Karnataka. One of the popular songs from, his, from him was, was Mile Sur Mera Tumhara. If you've not heard it, it's worth listening to on YouTube, alright. So, Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi in news. How should you make this relevant, relevant, relevant for yourself? If you do not know about types of musical instruments, if you do not know about the uh, the Hindustani classical music or musical instruments start looking at it just search the word type of musical instruments there are four type of musical instruments right so air based and sound based string based four type of them uh, do exist what are the type of Indian classical music now this nudge that I am providing even if you have not studied the traditional parts these you know in traditional parts of your portion nothing to worry just look at those roots uh, try to nurture your instincts. If you do that, I think uh, this will be fair. Now, many questions will come from this end only. Pre-exam, I'm talking on specifically the pre-exam. Bhim Sen Joshi might not be in news, but related to him is uh, the Khayal singing, right? Related to him is the Kirana Gharana. Related to him is the Hindustani classical music. If you look at those aspects, this is what will start, you know, uh, hitting your intuitions. And people say, you know, intelligent guesses. See, I have, I have, heard quite a few toppers of the examination pre-examination right now pre-examination many of them say that you will know the answers to 30 35 40 questions straight away out of 100 out of 100 you would know the answers straight away for 30 35 40 questions this is what we also say if you read the gazette right if you be, be a part of this series uh, around 20 questions were straight from the gazette straight and i have got a screenshot of all of them point being that uh, you know, these are the straightforward questions, but this is not necessary uh, for uh, being able to clear the exam. You will need the assistance of at least 60 questions or 65 questions. Considering the cutoff to be around 120, right? Usse zada zata nahi hai usually, your paper 1, 120 to 130 if the paper is uh, reasonably easy. So 60 questions need to be correct. We need to be answering 70, 75 questions. How do we do that? Guesswork. This is what people say. But in reality, it is not guesswork. It is not as random. It is the subconscious memory which starts to take shape and which starts to make tangible results for us. This is very important that I am speaking. And how does it happen? It happens through your previous learnings. Something that you have picked up right from your childhood. Not questioning if you have not picked up anything. Right now also you can do it, no? So how much will I be able to teach or share in an hour? I try my best. But I will need your assistance. You will be able to definitely derive a lot of benefits from this. Look at Hindustani classical music. Look at uh, uh, the four types of musical instruments. Look at uh, the, uh, uh, the Khayali music of the uh, what Girana, Kirana Girana. All right.
this is the intuition that will serve this is the smart guesswork that people speak of this is not guesswork at all this is the subconscious mind which is playing its role all right this is how you can utilize these kind of uh, you know uh, these kind of uh, windows as an opportunity for yourself m wrapper in news now this is the kind of uh, uh, entity which has been created in india for the first time to be able to carry the biological material from one place to another generated in india high quality material and uh, this is the only molecular transport medium to be manufactured in india that has stability of the sample and transporting media right so otherwise if if we have say covid covid virus itself can it be transported through simple jars or simple containers like this no not really it needs protection so these are the kind of entities which have now been created in our country itself all right that's why news two new transfer sites right amlan that they had declared the site by himself yeah these are the matching sites so one of them is in gujarat we are talking of uh, uh, a specific place in gujarat what is the district yes jamnagar district yes this is the place where one of the uh, bird sanctuaries is and it has been declared as ram society another one in uttar pradesh now point i am making here is that these are those sites where which are also a part of the uh, flyways for the birds out of the uh, how many flyways do exist around the world for the migratory birds is it 7 or 9 out of the number that you have mentioned 7 or 9 3 of them pass from india 3 of them one through western part of india so if this is the image of india schematic western part of india one through central and one through eastern as well they do not settle the birds do not settle here they go further south during the winter season but they also settle here you know they, it is like a it is like a, a pit stop for them so the birds are here for a short while and this is the reason that we have also put these places as ramsar sites in our country all right so 1971 ramsar convention these sites become very important for india right so uh, the wetland wetland there is a definition for wetland it must be covered in water for a certain period in the year the the dimension the level of depth also must be certain please remember please look at that definition if you're not i'll pass on that definition tomorrow itself all right breakthrough of the year award considered as this is considered as an oscar equivalent in this field of sport right uh, world breakthrough of the year award and a couple of people from india have been nominated for this award this was an old news maybe 10 days back but we couldn't cover on uh, on time so here it is neeraj chopra is one of them who was the other person right so neeraj chopra i was looking at one of his stories he himself said that he could not throw the javelin that he throws he could not bear uh, the cost of uh, the good quality javelins right and that good quality javelin would cost a little more than what he had so he had to save money from the money uh, that he got as a reward as a reward in, in in various events and through that he could afford to purchase a javelin not very very costly around 20000 rupees and this is how a person you know makes themselves right a young boy and i was also looking just few days back i was looking at the awards presented by the uh, ministry of defense award and these awards are presented on the newspaper itself right so many and so many people got uh, pvsm uh, you know vishisht seva medal avsm ati vishisht seva medal many kind of medals seva medal uh, many there are i think seven eight kind of medals that the government gives and only one person received one person who was a subedar major not even a commissioned officer he was a non commissioned officer only one person in the non commissioned officer received this prestigious award from the ministry not not this one but the one that i was speaking of these number of awards it was neeraj chopra so well imagine this is not about the stature or the rank it is only about the efforts that we put and and i keep on repeating to myself and to everybody else that personal victory precedes the public victory once we have to be uh, you know adde gona hai we have to be constant and we have to be motivated enough for ourselves to think that yes we can do it and then world will see that eventually right the world will not be able to ignore you same goes for answer i think once you see that you can do it once you have started to do it you are sharing it right here people viewing offline once you started to do it 
put it here put it here so that others can watch and then you will receive applause from your, each other right this is it yes pv sindhu thank you very much whole mafias of dhanbad absolutely ravi that is the word mafias all right so 41 49 number of the ramsar side thank you amdan all right i 49 that's what i remember all right so uh, coming down to these uh, editorials the third one first this is on the great power rivalry and india's participation the insight that this editorial presents from indian express is that though it seems as if we have discussed this see this is a matter of perspective that we are speaking so let's grow our perspectives then many editorials in which it was spoken of that america resigned from afghanistan and went back so that it could focus on china then many editorials which mentioned that america is also in the process of uh, resigning from uh, ukraine issue so that it could focus more on china on the other hand this editorial says that it is not so america is only realigning its priorities america has got enough firepower economic power to be able to counter two war fronts one in europe and one in china right and the present situation has also shown the same examples what are the examples see on one hand when russia and china have met again russia china remember the russia china and iran uh, naval exercises we conducted uh, we we studied off uh, just two days back so russia and china have realigned their focus and you know what they have declared <laughs> they have actually declared under quotes uh, friendship between two states has no limits and no forbidden areas of cooperation between russia and china no forbidden areas of cooperation what do they mean military only no what else defense technology military only that is the worst that can happen both of them uh, aligning with each other so when these people have aligned you look at the kind of alliances that usa has it has set all the ducks in order ducks no ducks european ducks the smaller ducks it has set all the ducks in order so britain is working towards resolution of issue france president of france has also gone to meet uh, uh, russian premier germany has been asked to take the side of the europe uh, and nato forces so what are why are they acting like this this is only under the um, you know these are ducks getting set in order for usa this is one look at the kind of alliances usa has set up in asia aukus squad right so newer alliances with countries like india this is something new greater alliances on military cooperation with with japan right so these are the kind of alliances through which it has strengthened its economy strengthened its polity all right so uh, this is an important thing to understand and uh, it might seem it might seem from superficial angles that uh, usa and europe has got certain dissonance they have they certainly have europe does not want usa to participate but this will be treated as a mistake in case russian and chinese feel that usa won't participate in a war in case it happens in europe it will definitely it has got the potential now what is in for india the editorial says in the last paragraph that for india india must take the hint from a country like germany germany has had to take a stand it cannot work midways yes russian gas pipeline russian you know uh, dealings is also fine and will also be a part of europe no it's not like that they have had to take a greater say here and they have had to side with some of the other side india will also have to do that in case that need be right now india's stakes are low here and therefore nobody is even asking for india it they told you clearly see if this india has got very less stakes but yes when the time is right if india is asked to participate where should india go india should definitely be on the side of the growing economies where there are forthcoming major partnerships towards the side of usa and it also gives the rationale the reason being that the 10 biggest economies 10 major economies of the world seven of them are allies of usa so germany japan canada uk france usa itself all of them towards the side of usa so india also in india itself right so india must be on that side all right this is the third editorial another one speaks of uh, peri urban transformations all right great p u a s this was this editorial has some in specific reference to the budget speech by the uh, finance minister right so there will be growth in urban areas in the coming times if this is an urban area and there are areas linked to the urban areas which are close to it peri urban areas right the uh, areas which have not been urbanized or are urbanized but not declared as urban 
these are the areas where we have more slum population these are the people who provide services and working hands for an urban uh, transformation and this is where we must focus at for uh, the future growth of and planning of cities and uh, this is where the government has constituted committees to study to study the present level of uh, uh, urban services economy employment delivery in peri urban areas they become very very important because urban transformation is definitely happening but if this is the transformation that happens this will result in actual inclusive development of urban areas presently there are many urban areas which which must be designated as uh, urban but they are not designated example bihar has got uh, only 10% urbanized population how is it possible when census definition itself says that places with the greater than uh, a specific density or specific population 5000 area population 5000 persons population then uh, persons with 400 persons per square kilometer and persons in indulging in more than 75% of non agricultural activity these places should be treated as urban is bihar having shortage of these numbers no not at all right so point being that many urban areas have not been designated as urban but they must be and peri urban transformation this is what must be focused at right even if even if they have not been designated as urban areas this is the word pu peri urban areas puas all right so resulting of flaws in many puas have social economic and environmental problems which are a result of flaws in legislation planning governance as a result efforts must be taken to preserve puas traditional nature while also guiding future growth in a planned manner see okay the third editorial yes urban rural and urban so urban mission providing urban facilities in rural areas urban was also a question in uh, the times when i appeared for upsc exam i think 2040 they asked on urban mission providing urban amenities in rural areas okay all right moving ahead to all right thank you nine major flyways in case we have mentioned 48 here all right i'll take note ravi says us diverted china to afghanistan to make them lose focus from south china sea all right strategies all right what what have you people mentioned shiru here all right the first editorial is on india versus big tech moderation see india is fighting the big techs no facebook uh then we have uh, twitter and then we have uh, such tech giants right so facebook twitter google some of the other level india is also in fight with these companies for data localization all right for uh, autonomy over india's data for privacy matters right many of them these techs as i have mentioned previously these tech giants which are international in nature they are not regulated by anybody they are not even democratic bodies on the other hand american union is a democratic body so is uk so is india but these tech giants have a huge revenue and these uh, ceos or vice presidents they are not even not even elected many times so they do not have that legitimacy but they carry a huge power this is where governments not only india governments around the world they try to curb the independence of big, big tech companies right and one of the important ways in which they try to do is is through freedom of speech or negation of freedom of speech right so uh, this is the area of contention for many of these companies google facebook many of them right so uh, facebook in news in india because of uh, you know the riots in delhi and then it was not able to curtail the uh, independence of speech online right on facebook media itself facebook noted some uh, shortcomings and lacunae so this is one of them right the idea is to ensure that the government should not regulate them first the big techs should regulate themselves first the same thing that is happening to online media companies inside india it must happen to online companies as well this will set a great example for future on the other hand the governments should try to curb their uh, you know their participation also because many of it is vague you know the government participation in curtailing of online media companies or media companies in general tv channels it is vague there are times when the government says uh, to ndtv that 
one 24 hours of shutdown because you you know you uh, you know you 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 displayed something that was not to be displayed right so uh, of course these are a, a penalty which can lead to uh, you know correction of their courses but then the governments largely should try to regulate their uh, overseeing capacities and big tech should regulate by themselves right one of these one of these uh, important agencies to regulate themselves these big techs are the Santa, Santa Clara principles, right? Santa Clara principles on accountability, transparency, and governance. Private companies, organizations. All right. This is the crux of this particular editorial. If you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments, and shares. Usme kam nahi ho, right? So this is how we'll be able to develop better than uh, whatever we are right now. Case study of this day is on a lady who has come as a messiah for people with leprosy, leprosy patients. So she helps people because she has gone through something very similar. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. She's trying to help those specific people uh, who are uh, leprosy bound, although cured, but socially ostracized. This is what had happened to her when her parents were infected with a disease of leprosy. Right. So uh, because she has gone through a thing like this, she's able to help others far better now. Empathy. This is the value that I generate for myself. When I look at the story of this lady, Miss, uh, Mrs. Reddy, from Delhi, from Delhi itself, empathy, looking through the eyes of others, hearing through the ears of others, and uh, feeling through the heart of others, right? This is what is empathy about. So when I look at a word empathy, start to um, generate a small definition for it. Empathy is a keyword in itself. It has been put in the UPSC paper 4 syllabus, right? This is a good example of it, right? She as a child was shunned in school as her parents were suffering from leprosy itself, right? Her day begins early and she helps uh, people, the, you know, the patients get some weight, uh, you know, uh, aid. Quote for today, the biggest disease today is not leprosy or tuberculosis, but rather the feeling of being unwanted. This is what she is against, right? If you like this effort from our end, Share some love through likes, comments and shares. If you subscribe to this channel, you will receive updates for amazing videos like this. I know you have all subscribed to the channel, but I don't know if you are following ADEC or not. For every article, you got to follow ADEC. Analysis, data, examples, cases and keywords. They will help you not only survive, you will clear the examination through things like this. If you go to Edukimi's website, I haven't shared this right now. If you go to Edukimi's website, you will be able to find a place where we have uh, spoken of just a bit. Of the questions that came directly from uh, the website, from, from our content, right? So go to resources section, current uh, resources sections. No, this is in the blogs. We have written uh, a few blogs here, you should look at this, GS Complete Analysis Paper 2, GS Complete Analysis Paper 1. And uh, if you get into this, uh, faculty has spoken about specific components of how this question was asked from GS papers, right? This is important for you, why? Because this is the analysis that we present from each of the subjects. So paper 1 has uh, three components, geography, history and society. The questions asked, sectoral analysis is right here right by the faculty the number of questions asked and below this you will find after this analysis you will find a link here click here to see question wise mapping of various questions from our sources many of the sources have been gazette itself paper one paper two we will also uh, you know uh, entail entailing this will be paper three as well so if you look into this if you click here you will be able to access a document of around 50 55 pages in paper one around 75 pages in paper two and around 75 pages again in paper three 70 75 pages here point i'm making is when we make a claim it is not a random claim you should be able to see and you should see how these questions directly fit with what we share so this becomes very very relevant for you i want you to look at it because eventually eventually you clear the pre-examination yahi the questions are now these are the questions you have to solve these 20 questions in each of the paper and how when you're dedicating time here you have to see you know the cost benefit is it beneficial or not so you will be able to see not only gazette here you will also see the msp main support program or the test series the answers that have been written on those topics itself are they friendly are they helpful or not 
right so have a look have a look so that you are able to gauge or understand if these are the kind of sources that actually help you or not and if they are helping you so how you should extract information ye this will help you in course correction kitna data pick karna hai you got enormous data i know that right some of you presenting beautiful facts and figures amazing but what is the level up to which you should present data along with that how many examples or cases can be presented some model answers examples of this they have all been placed here question wise mapping of what has come from our portions and this will help you trust me this will help you only looking at this i'm not saying you should join a course or not join a course i'm saying just look at the mapping you will be able to understand it and um, and to this i will also come to this question this is a part of the feature news for today all right so uh, if you like this video enough share some love to likes comments and shares and we will quickly meet within a minute we'll meet in the uh, in the feature news for today that is on the data the new oil data all right thank you for watching and thank you for participating all of you yes chiru <laughs> yeah china russia and iran alliance thank you thank you for participating i will see you quickly in the feature news questions please put them down and likes koi kami nahi hone chahiye